Hey everybody, this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials that covers Scratch and the new version, Scratch 3.0. Um, I made some tutorials a while ago, uh, but I just kind of want to make an updated version with sort of the new version of Scratch and all the new things I've learned over the years. So I'm going to go here, and this is going to be the very first program uh, that we make. If you have no experience programming, no experience with Scratch, that is totally cool. You are in the right spot and we'll learn to do some uh, cool stuff. So if I click on the green flag, you see my elephant comes down. He gets scared by from that big sound. Oh no, what was that? He better get out of that scary castle. He leaves and then he goes, has a dance party on a beach with a ballerina. Um, you could obviously make this story kind of however you want and I encourage you to do so, but let's get started and see how we can make something like this. I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna go over to Scratch. If you do not have an account, you could sign up for one. It will allow you to save your content. If you don't feel like making one, that's cool too. Uh, we could just go to create and it will bring us, after it creates our projects and all this, it brings us to the canvas on which we will be creating all of our Scratch masterpieces. So we have these bricks over here and they go in different categories and we piece these bricks together to control what happens over here. Uh, we have some characters down here. You could add different characters and then we have our backdrops over here. So first thing I am going to do is I am going to get rid of this sprite by clicking on the X. And so now it's just a blank white screen. I wanna get a new character in there. If I go and choose a sprite, that's what characters are called in Scratch. They call them sprites. Now I'll be referring to them as sprites from here on out, although I'll probably make some mistakes too. So let me choose a sprite. I want to cook, cook a little magnifying glass. And then I need to find my elephant. They have the categories up here. So I'm assuming it's an animals uh, elephant. There we go. Cool. So I have my elephant uh, floating around this blank white void. So I want to make sure that he has a backdrop. I'm going to go here. Same thing. Choose a backdrop from the library by clicking on that magnifying glass. And I'm going to go to castle three. And now he's in the setting that he was before. So I want my elephant to start here. Then I want him to go here. And then I want him to come down here. So movement in Scratch is controlled with X and Y. If you look down here, you can see his X value and his Y value. X is horizontal. Y is vertical. So if I were to move him to the right, watch the X value change. See how that increases? If I were to bring it over here, see how that decreases? And then if I bring it up like that, the Y will increase. And if I bring it down, the Y will decrease. If we go over to motion, you could see that he can go to a various spot. So if I had him go to zero and zero, he would go right in the middle. If I were to have him go to X100, he would go over there. Now it would be a real pain to have to like guess where he's gonna be. So fortunately, Scratch does this cool thing where once you drag him there, this will change. So now if I drag this out and then I go to events and I drag this out, when the green flag is clicked, he is always going to go there regardless of what happens. So if I were to say I were to drag him down here and now I click on the green flag, boom, he will snap back up to there. And we do have this problem that while elephants are supposed to be big, he is bigger than what I really want. So I want to change his size before I get him moving and playing with all of the movements and locations because that might change things. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change the size from 100 to, let's say, 60. There we go. And now he looks positively svelte and fit and he looks ready to go down those stairs. So I'm just going to double check that it still works there. Yep, it still looks good. So we have our go-tos. In addition to the go-to, we also have the glides. And that's what I'm gonna do here. If I drag him down, watch the glide change. It's gonna snap there. I'm gonna drag it there. And then I'm gonna glide him down here and see how that changes. And now I can drag it here. So what's gonna happen is when I press the green flag, he's immediately gonna go here, but then it's gonna take him one second to glide down here and then glide down to there. So like that, room, room. He goes like that. If I were to change this to like two, this is gonna make him go slow. Down there, and conversely, if I were to go 0.5, he 
he is going to be flying down those stairs. Okay. But we are more safety conscious than that, so we are going to go back to one and make him go like that. Now, once he is down here, we want that scary sound to come about. So I'm going to go over to the sounds tab. And right now, the only sound that I have is this pop. And that does not do the trick that I want. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose a sound. And you have all of these over here. So I think it was in effects and boom cloud. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but pick any sound that you want. Yeah, cool. All right, boom sound. And then from there, you can kind of do whatever you want with the sounds. So if you add like an echo effect, does that if you were to slow it down. Does that. And you can play around and have a grand old time like that. You could also record your voice and also have a really fun time with that but that's out of the scope of this video. I am going to go back until I have my original sound. There we go. And now I'm gonna go back to my code. And I added a sound to my sound library, but that doesn't actually make it do anything. So in order to make it do something, I need to go to the sound tab. We have two options with sound. We have play sound until done, and then we have start sound. Play sound until done, if I were to like put it here, it would wait the entire time before it continued on with the code. So if I go here, and then it'll wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and then he'll go. Whereas if I do start sound, boom, cloud, does it immediately, boom. So we are gonna do start sound or because we don't wanna have to wait that entire time because that would get kind of annoying. Uh, but I do want, like, I don't want him to say something immediately. I kind of want him to, uh, you know, pause, think about it, really understand the circumstances of what's happening, a dramatic pause. So I'm going to go to control and I'm just going to have him wait for, let's have him wait for two seconds. And then from there, let's have him wait two seconds and then let's have him get scared. So he is going to say, go to looks and we can have him say, Oh no. Now if I control click or right click or two finger click or whatever you need to do for your secondary click and duplicate, go down there, it will just duplicate it for me. And I don't want that happening yet. He's gonna say, I better get out of here. Man, he's a cool elephant. So now when I do it, let's have it go one second. We don't wanna sit through all that. Boom, cool. Now in the other one, I have that cool effect where like he's he looks more scared. So what we need to do is we need to change his costume. So if I go over here to costumes, uh, something that Scratch 3.0 is really cool with is that they have these various things that you could change. So right now we have it in vector mode. Uh, we could also convert it into bitmap. So for now, I'm just gonna go here vector is controlled with shapes so it allows you to just kind of like play with these shapes like this and just do whatever you want manipulate these things play with your fills it's a lot of fun to play with well whereas bitmap is all pixel based i cannot manipulate this shape anymore what i can do is just kind of draw and paint and use everything that bitmap based uh, drawing will um, will allow me to do. But for our purposes here, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to control click and duplicate, make a copy of him. We're going to keep this in vector. So I am going to click on his ear and I am going to make it bigger. I'm going to click on this ear. I'm also going to make it bigger. And now let's delete his eyes. Oh no, it's cool, man. You'll get some back later. And let's make our own eyes. So I am going to, we have our fill and our outline. The fill is what goes inside of it. And the outline is the stroke around it. So I want 
Let's have white with no outline. I'm gonna draw it like that. And then I want another one with a black fill. Oh. Oops, that's not what I want. Make sure you click off it first. And then I wanna make a new one, a black fill. And it's gonna go in there. Cool, and you could use this arrow to kind of move it around too. Zoom in with that, click it, and there we go. Cool. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, now zoom out, and we want to make a copy of this eye because we don't want a one eyed elephant. And can I alt click this? I forget. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to click on that, there. I'm going to shift, shift, hold down alt. Is that going to work? Yeah, cool. Get it, get it. Now, if you hold down Alt, click out here, it'll make a nice little copy like that. Just make sure you select everything. Or you could draw your own eyes again. That's cool too. All right, so you could play around this. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different ways that you could do with it. Definitely mess around with as much bitmap and vector as you can. And now we have two different costumes. We have this one and we have this one. So I'm gonna go back here. And when he first starts, I wanna switch his costume to elephant A, because here you have elephant A. However, after all of this, I want to switch it to elephant B. Oh, sorry, elephant A2. There we go. Boom. Boom. Except this should go over here. Okay. Now, after this happens, he is going to glide over here. So I drag him there. And then glide him. Then after this, what I want to do is I want to change my backdrop. So just like here, we switch our costume. We're going to pretty much do the same thing in backdrops. We're going to go to our backdrop and we're going to pick a nice, very pleasant place for our elephant to relax and have his dance party in. So we got a beach around here somewhere. There we go. Actually, let's go to Rio. That'd be nice. Cool. All right. So uh, my elephant is in Rio and I'm going to go here. And when the green flag is clicked, just like we initially switched the costume, we initially want to switch the backdrop to Beach Rio. And then we want to switch the backdrop. Oops, that's switch costume. I don't want that. I'm going to switch the backdrop to the castle. Oh, no, I messed that up. Don't do it in that order. You want to do it like that. Cool. All right, so initially switch it to the castle. Then switch it to Beach Rio. Sweet. Okay. And now once he's here, we want him to encounter the ballerina. So let's add the ballerina. There we go. Cool. And when the green flag is clicked, let's bring her over here. Now we have a problem. And that's when we press the green flag, she's still going to be there. So what we need to do is we need to hide her when the green flag is clicked. And now the problem is when do we show her? Like we could use that weight block. Like we have this wait two seconds. We could count this off like two, one, two, four, six. So if we wait six seconds, no, seven seconds, then have her show, that would work. But then the problem is if we add something else, then that would add another second and we have to change it. And that's just really bad coding. So what we have here that's going to be really useful to us is this event. And if I do when the backdrop switches to Beach Rio, then I could show her. So this is always going to be checking. Is the backdrop switching? Is the backdrop switching? Is the backdrop switching? When the backdrop finally does switch to Beach Rio, then it shows her. One other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that she is in the same spot all the time in case she accidentally um, gets dragged. So now that we have that, let's have her dance. So we made our own costume with the elephant here. We made a second one, but a lot of these characters come with their own other costumes. You can see they made this one so that it looks like she's dancing. And what we can do is we can go here 
and we could do a loop. So if you drag that to forever, this will forever keep on going all the time, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then if you go to looks, we were switching the costume, but there's also this block called next costume. So I'm gonna to go to my next costume and then I am going to wait 0.1 seconds between each one. So now forever, it's going to cycle through all of the costumes while waiting 0.1 seconds between each iteration of that. So let's take a look and see what this is like. Oh no, I better get out of here, man. Boom, then he goes here. All right, everything's great except my elephant is being a wallflower over here, not wanting to dance. That's not what we want our elephant to do. So I'm gonna drag this up and I'm gonna have him go there. I want him to not have his scared costume on anymore because he is happy and confident elephant that is dancing. And so let me switch the back, switch the costume to elephant A. Then finally, let's uh, get the elephant to have some of his moves on his own here. So there's obviously no costume for a dancing elephant in this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him rotate back and forth. So if I go to motion, you could see where point and direction. If you do point and direction, you could have him like go in different ways. Do it. Ah, mess that up. There we go. So I could try this. This is gonna work. Yeah. So we can go up like that and duplicate it. Drag it down. And then see what it's like here. Cool, and then he'll go down like that. And now I am going to wait, let's wait one second in between here. If you want his dance to have a greater tempo, then you could decrease the amount of wait time between each step in the dance. And then we're gonna do another forever loop. One final thing I need to do now is that I need to make sure he's at his original 90 degrees when he starts or else he'll be going down the stairs like that. And that is not safe. So let's go here, boom. See what this looks like. Awesome, cool. The only thing left to do is to add some music, but that is up to you. Add some of your own awesome music into that and come back for our next tutorial where we'll actually be making a real game where you could interact and control your character with the keyboard and have winners and losers and so on. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this and that this was a nice way to dip your, um, get your toes wet with Scratch.